Well, we all know it's certain in life, death and taxes, and so we're going to help you a little bit, hopefully, today, uh, talking a bit about the tax side of things. We've all had that sinking feeling when we check our portfolio holdings and see we've taken a hit on a stock or two or three. There is supposed a silver lining, that is, at least the tax rules allow us to use those losses to offset other capital gains we might have. Joining us to explain the rule, how to use it, make the best of a bad situation, Scott Booth. He joins us from TD Wealth, he's an analyst with North American Equities. How are you? Very good, thanks. Yourself? Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I was looking at your list of uh, some of the losers out there, and unfortunately I know some of these names a little too uh, intimately right now, but we're talking right now about tax loss selling. And why are we talking about this now? Well, I mean, it comes to the end of the year and everybody starts thinking about it now. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got to get those trades in by, in Canada case, December 23rd, in the States, uh, December 27th. And that's if you want to have losses that are, that are recognized in 2016. Right. So you have to crystallize the loss this yep. year in order to use it. Tell me, just let's just back up a little bit before we hit the dates and just what is the rule? What, what it was? It, well, well it essentially, if you've got gains in your portfolio, yep. um, you're going to pay taxes on them if, when, when you realize those. Yep. In, in, in non-registered. In non-registered accounts. Yep. That's right. Yep. So not in your TFSA or your RSP, etc. Or your RIF or anything like that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Um, but if you want to minimize those taxes that you're paying, on the gains that you've 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 made, uh, you can tax loss sell and uh, realize some losses and use those to offset and reduce your tax bill. And how long? I, I understand you, if you have um, uh, any gains if, if in this year or for the last three years, you can use those losses against them? And that's exactly it. You can go back three years and then uh, you can use them this year and you can also carry them forward indefinitely. Right. So, I mean, if you've got stuff that's down and and whether you want to hold it or or, 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 or sell it, you, you can realize a loss on it and, uh, and use that going forward. And you said in terms of realizing the loss, um, you know, this comes down to just, just selling the stock and selling it in time by the end of the year. So give me the dates again, because I just want to, I don't want to really, because they're, they're important. They I'm, I, I know people will sometimes call, you know, panic. It's like, oh, I want to get the, you know, on December 29th. It's like, no. No, too late. It's too late. So, uh, so in Canada, it is December 23rd. In the U if you're U.S. stocks, there's a little different settlement process there. Uh, so it's December 27th if you want to get. But I mean, I don't think it, you're better, probably better served in looking after these things now. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're making it part of a, a broader portfolio review or rebalancing, uh, you know, you can decide where you want to take some some gains because certainly there's a lot of stocks that have done well this year. Yeah. And then you know, as part of that tax management process, taking some losses, uh, whether you want reallocate or just part ways for a short time with a, a certain security uh, the, you know there's lots of opportunities to do that I, I think you know you bring up a really good point because you know this isn't just about a tax management this is about portfolio management yeah. and tax management at the same time exactly. so my question to you is I've got some stocks they haven't done so well um, uh, how do I decide that I do want to sell them, or how do I decide I'm going to hang on to them and, and keep on going? Sure. Well, you certainly don't want tax to be the primary motivator for those decisions. But you know, if you've bought something and the investment thesis hasn't played out, the reasons why you own it come into question. These are certainly good cues that it may be time to to find a different solution. And and certainly those are probably candidates that go at the top of the list for things to sell. Obviously, uh, looking at your portfolio, your statement, and seeing the ones that have big red numbers beside them or, or, or negative signs, are, that's a good way, place to start. Um, but but really, I, I mean, I think you don't have, like I said, you don't have to part ways permanently with things. There is a 30 days window after which if you decide you want to sell something and then repurchase it more than 30 days later, uh, you will get credit for that loss. Right, but you have to wait 30 days. Absolutely, and, and on either side of that. So you can't purchase this 30 days before you sell or 30 days after. Got it, okay, that's important. And this is the superficial loss rule. Exactly, the, if you don't want the CRA to come back to you and say that it is a superficial loss. Yeah, uh, it's all did all that for nothing then, yes. so yeah. yeah. Let me ask you about, because I, I saw a note here, you said something about um, you know ETFs. There's something interesting about some ETFs around um, superficial tax losses. Sure, well if you're buying, like if you're swapping between two ETFs and and they and they track the same index, right? So it's one company's ETF versus another, but they're both, let's say, uh, gold ETFs. Exactly, yeah. and and if, if they track specifically the same underlying index, right. then you can run afoul of the CRA. So even though it. technically it's a different security, it's the same same thing. exposure, let's call it. Yeah, and, and CRA and will say. No, no dice. Interesting. I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. You have a list attached to the report that you put out, and I said, unfortunately, I was a little too familiar with some <laughs> of the names. Let's just, and again, I'm not picking on anybody here. These are just some of the names. Uh, Valiant, 
uh, is one of the uh, uh, stocks, I think it's down year to date, 79%. Um, Cameco down about 37%. Uh, Linamar, I know, is on the list uh, down about 28%. Uh, I think we can bring them up here. You've got a long, long list here. And it's funny because for a lot of these, um, there's the uh, there's the look right now. A lot of these, the investment thesis has changed for many It has these. indeed, yeah. And there's a lot of oil and gas companies on here too, or I mean, probably more so before, but we're still seeing some now right now yeah. in, in terms of, of, of what's going on. Um, do, do you think, you know, are there any buying opportunities that can happen at the end of the year because of all this tax loss selling? I, I think that there, there's certainly are. I mean, it seems like people do leave it to the last minute. And like I said, don't do that. Go yeah. out, get your ducks in a row now. But maybe you and, can look at other people and, and take and, advantage and of them. And then when someone it. else is motivated to sell things in mid-December, maybe maybe there are some buying opportunities there. One of the areas that I cover pretty closely is the preferred share market. And it seems like there's a, a perennial weakness in, in, you know, the second week of December kind of thing. And, you know, in my view, that's probably a much better time to be a buyer than a seller. Interesting insights. Scott, thanks so much. Great. Thanks for having me. Scott Booth, he's an analyst with North, or excuse me, analyst of North American Equities with the Portfolio Advice and Investment Research Group at TD Wealth.